All right, so thank you everybody for joining today's session. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and where you all, uh, but we really appreciate your time. So today uh, I'm joined by Nick Taylor, who is the product expert. So he's going to go through a lot more detail, but we want to set the stage about the test automation, specifically within the ERP context, you know, Oracle ERP context. Oracle has ERP in a both cloud as well as on-prem applications. And we're gonna talk about some of the common challenges and why do we need test automation? But before we begin, a brief um, agenda for today, how it's going to go, uh, testing challenges and why the test automation is required. And then obviously we go into the product uh, deep dive, plus we'll have a lot of plenty of room for Q and A. Uh, my name is again, Ramesh Kumar. Uh, I'm the CEO and founder of E-Alliance Corporation. We are a boutique consulting company located in Naperville, Illinois. And we've been around since 2002. Uh, we have done quite a bit of it, Oracle ERP implementations uh, for almost 17, 18 years. And for the last five years, we have partnered with UiPath, the leading RPA platform vendor in the marketplace. And we've been very successful um, in, in the building up our RPA packages. So these are all a few of our customers that we have successfully introduced uh, RPA, automation, test automation, things of that nature. Um, so we hope uh, you know, we'll, we'll be working with you soon. Uh, so today's session is all about ERP test automation, as I said, within the ERP context. As you all know, ERP applications are a huge, humongous application, and they require constant upgrades, you know, quarterly patching for various reasons, especially because of the security, the product vendors do roll out quarterly upgrades and they, they insist that these patches get on time. But many companies still do the testing, right? Our key requirement is whenever ERP is changed, we just want to make sure the existing functionality doesn't get wrong, doesn't get break, right? After the patches are applied, you still need to get an order, still need to ship the product out, you still need to build the customer, take the money, so on and so forth. When you do this testing as a manual exercise, and we have a lot of challenges to deal with. For example, the time that takes away the business user. These business users have to take literally a bunch of their time on a regular basis to spend the test, make sure the testing you know, the system still works after the patch. But that's a, you know, when you're when you doing manually, you don't, first of all, you don't test the systems on time. That means there's still a lot of backlogs. That means you're not getting new functionality, new security in place. Plus you're interrupting your business operations. Plus you're not testing all functionality because there's only so many cycles that you can go through. So potentially things kind of slip through, go into production and things get break, right? So the, how do we address these challenges? And especially because of the tight labor market and people are not there, you know, um, if you can't get them enough, we are moving, we are going to talk about the, what the UiPath, the RPA platform offers for us as an automation, test automation. Now, if you look at these numbers, you know, we got this from the research, where the time takes, in a, in a test cycle, right? So again, you are, you are doing this every three months, every six months, every nine months, and where the bulk of the time, the majority of one third or one fourth of time is one third is taking up with a manual testing. Now, there are other activities that you can get away with that, right? You need to set up the test environment, you gotta make sure the scripts are there, but as much as we can automate, I mean, that's the power, okay? So the, the demo that uh, Mick is going to show us is going to help us uh, take care of this and then probably a few of the other elements as well. Now, when we talk about the test automation, what exactly is that? So you have these test cases, right? You know, we already know entering an order, shipping the product, you know, raising the invoice, all these business processes, they're already standard. And we use the RPA to create this automation workflows. On top of that, use the UiPath test suite product to execute this test in, a, in an automated fashion. 
And once you get that, the, all the users have to do is review the results uh, and then you know approve or reject. That's basically. So by doing this automation, we significantly reduce the uh, cost of failures. More importantly, relieve the business users basically. So uh, you know the whole world is moving. I know within the especially in the Oracle EBS, there are you know there are uh, other tools, testing tools. They come and gone because they are not flexible or they're too expensive. I think one of the reasons was why there is not much of adoption in Oracle ERP world is basically that they're, they're not just good enough tools. Basically, we hope. UI path test week is going to change that um, in the, is in automating this uh, ERP testing uh, process. So Mick, I'm going to stop sharing. So let's deep dive into the test suite part. All righty. So let me get my screen sharing here. All right. So you guys should be able to see my uh, my screen now. And uh, I guess. I'm just going to turn on my video just so I can say hi real quick. Um, just so you guys know that I am not a robot and I just help build robots. Um, but today what we're going to do is we are going to do a full demo of Test Suite. And all my demos are not the same um, because I kind of like to pivot. Um, if there's something that you guys want to see more of, let me know. You know, interrupt me in the chat, uh, the chat window. I'm going to try to keep that up and try to respond to your questions as they come up. Uh, but at the end, I will save about 10 minutes to, to go through some questions. Um, so kind of the agenda for today is that we are going to um, just go through, uh, you know, about 10 slides. Then we're going to hop into a live demo. So we're going to look at how you utilize Test Suite, how we can connect it to different tools. We're going to use a combination of videos. Plus, we're also going to, you know, dive right into Studio and Orchestrator and Test Manager um, and kind of get a feel for how to use those. But all of today, what we're going to be focusing on is Test Suite. So whether it is testing out your RPA automations or testing out your um, uh, your applications, you know, themselves. So whether it's SAP or ServiceNow or, you know, something homegrown, we're going to learn how to how to test those with UiPath Test Suite. And just as a reminder, this is not something to supplement training. You know, we have loads of training available online. So keep in mind, you're not going to come out of this as an expert, but I will give you tons of resources that you'll, uh, you know, you'll have at your disposal so that you can go back into, uh, into our Academy site and learn how to become a test suite expert. Um, all right, so how about we get started? I'm going to turn off my video just to uh, help not be distracting. And we'll get started. So we're going to start off with just talking about, you know, why we need Test Suite. You know, where did it come from? Um, so to start out, um, we had some customers that came to us and this was about two and a half years ago. They said to us, hey, UiPath, we really like your software. You know, we really like using it for RPA, um, but we've got a bunch of people that have started to, to create test scripts with UiPath Studio. And, you know, we're, we've, we've kind of created a framework around it where we've, you know, we've, we're using some spreadsheets to track, you know, our use cases and our test scripts, but we want a formal way of doing this. So what we did is we said, you know what, how about we create the UiPath test suite? And, you know, you know, we, we kind of looked at the industry and we said, you know, what can this test suite be useful for? You know, the goal of, of automation is to really create, you know, a fully automated enterprise and that requires scaling. But what we found is scaling is hard. And then and we found in a study by Deloitte that only about 15% of organizations are actively scaling their automation programs. And when we talk about scaling, we, we define it as about, you know, greater than 50 automations. There's many barriers to scaling, whether it's lack of executive or uh, support or automating automating the wrong use cases, um, 
you know, one of the main things that we found was that oftentimes you have some projects that are failing and then that that's due to the automations, you know, stopping, you know, stopping being functional. And we found the reason why, you know, why that was was happening was say, you know, you know, we, if you look at an automation, you tend to have, you know, this honeymoon period where you have a rapid ROI, where, you know, that these automations are really, you know, getting a lot of, you know, you know, a lot of, 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 a benefit from it and then oftentimes there's exceptions and then there's maintenance that's required to be done on that and you know as the as the processes get more complex and you know they are automated the maintenance burden grows and you you start to s slow the pipeline of your automations which is where the turning point of the roi begins to flatten here so really, you know, what we want to do is we want to look at, you know, how can we reduce this? You know, how can we avoid hitting this turning point? And why are why are there issues with these automations? So where are they failing? So sometimes they're happening in, you know, the automations themselves. So maybe maybe it can't find an object on the screen because that object changed and you didn't write your selectors well. Maybe it's the application itself changes. So, you know, there's there's a change on the application where, you know, you change the UI, um, but you didn't recognize that until it made it into prod. So by the time it made it into prod, the automation was broken itself. So we needed to make fixes there. And then there's oftentimes there's environment issues. So whether, you know, if there's a desktop upgrade to all the machines and then you know you you don't see that until it's gone into prod again so all of this causes us to have frequent changes in many different areas which causes high maintenance periods so what we can do that what we can do about that is if you if you start finding those issues earlier before they pile up on the business or the coe to address we can use the test suite and use a continuous methodology that puts this all into practice so if we if we're convinced that maintenance effort related to rpa can can be reduced dramatically um, then we can be convinced that rpa from high maintenance activity will turn into a low maintenance activity so when we talk about test suite, who is this for? So there's there's a variety of different people that this can be for. Whether it's your development folks that you know are building these these automations, these these RPA automations, or whether they are building homegrown applications, they can use test suite. Um, then there's the IT folks, and then we also have the you know the business folks. All of these folks can be using the same tool. And if they're all using the same tool, then they can share and reuse the automation components across the different in across the different areas. So say you're say you've got an RPA team that has built out a you know an, an automation that works on Salesforce. Now, if you wanted, you could utilize all of those automations then for the you know the Salesforce maintenance team. They're they want to utilize that, that functionality. They just add some assertions, reuse those those components, and then they've got you know something that they can share. They can share, reuse those skills across the different teams. One thing that we're really proud of at UiPath is very recently, as of March 2022, we were recognized as a leader in the IDC Marketscape for cloud testing. And why this is so exciting for us is because this is the first time that we submitted to this IDC Marketscape um, evaluation. Um, we earned the highest overall strategy score. Um, and there are, there are uh, companies on this slide here that have been in this this area for years and years now. Um, and we we just leapfrogged them right away and really have shown that, you know, in just a couple of years that we've become, you know, one of the leaders in this testing space. And it really just shows that, you know, our customers are recognizing how useful the tool is. Okay. All right. So we're going to go into one last slide. 
And this is my favorite slide, and I like to draw all over this one, so hopefully it's not too, too distracting. But what we're going to do is we're just going to draw all over this slide, and then um, we're going to talk about kind of the architecture of how the UiPath test suite actually works. Um, and then we'll, we'll uh, go into the live demonstration. So to start out, we like to just kind of mention the first three products. So if you guys know UiPath, you know Studio, which is where we build our actual automations. Then we have Orchestrator, which is where you host all of your applications. It's your command center for, for everything. And then we have UiPath robots. And these robots are what actually run the automations. And it's the same thing with Test Suite. You build your test scripts in Studio, you, build, you deploy them onto Orchestrator, and then we run them with test robots. Just a slightly different flavors, flavor of, of robots. These are just test robots. They look for assertions rather than accomplishing a business outcome. And then what we've also done is we've added on an extra piece. So we've added on this test manager uh, hub and test manager app. The test manager hub is a backend web app it's hosted on an IAS server, or you can have it in the cloud. So it can be cloud, it can be on-prem, okay? And then on then what we have is we have a front end web app over here, which is just a GUI for you to be able to create dashboards and reporting for your uh, for your test scripts. Um, you can write out your requirements. So document documentation for your test scripts and your use cases is very important, as well as all of, you know, all of your test cases and test sets that you want to have. Now, what I love about Test Suite so much is that we've really kind of tried to create it as an open platform. And what we mean by this is that if you guys are already using uh, Atlassian Jira, um, if you guys are using Azure DevOps product boards today, then you can utilize Test Manager and, all, and the full UiPath suite to integrate with those tools. Now, what does that look like in a real world scenario? So how will we illustrate that kind of in a in you know a real world scenario that we might have? So let's take for instance we have a use case where we need to to test the functionality of a web app, you know, a banking web app that we can log that we can utilize the login page. So maybe we have a requirement. So let's let's just call this this is our requirement right here. Um, so this is you know to be able to log in. And then below that. We might have you know a variety of different test cases so test case one two and three so i just wrote tc for test case so these test cases are asserting that the you know this requirement for this login is able to 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 be successful unsuccessful maybe there's a validation area error we want to be able to test that and we're going to write out all of these things say in jira so these requirements are written in jira so we you know we write a requirement we tie the test cases to it in atlassian jira if you guys don't know what jira is already i'm going to show you a little bit on how we would do that within jira uh, today once we go into the live demo so we're, we would utilize Jira, and because Jira is connected to our test manager hub, which is connected to our studio, when we go into studio and we build the, you know, our, we connect our requirement to test cases as well. So we go and write and automate it. So these are automations over here that we're building in studio. So we built out these test cases in Studio, we link them back to Jira. And then that what that means is anytime we run these test cases via Studio or robots, that the results are going to go to uh, to Jira. So then the flow means that, you know, we can take these these automations, we put them into Orchestrator, then we manually or you know, we set them up on a schedule to run by via the robots, then the robot will return the results to, to orchestrator, then the results will go back to test manager. And then lastly, the results will go back to Atlassian Jira, where you can view all of the results from your test run.
Now there's one other case that I like to talk about, which is where maybe you want to utilize something such as Git. So you have a repository here. And this is just a separate area, you know, where you might have, you know, some code that we want to take and we're going to check it into Git. So we check our code into Git and we have this Git repository connected to one of the CI CD tools. So say, uh, say we're using Azure DevOps right here and we check our code into Git. Azure DevOps recognizes, hey, there's some code that's been posted into that Git repository. Let's go and package up all those test cases and then run those with the test robot. Whether this is a, a application test or an RPA test, those robots can be run. They return the results back to Orchestrator. Orchestrator sends the message back to Azure DevOps saying, you know, if everything passes, then we're going to accept this code check-in. If there's failures, then let's reject this new code post for the developer to make some fixes. But regardless of what happens, the results are also going to then be fed back to Test Manager and to Jira, and then we'll be able to view our results everywhere. This really creates, you know, full automation across the enterprise. We're not wasting our time with with you with doing, you know, the 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 manual efforts of logging what happens on our test cases. We found that a lot of testers nowadays days, maybe even if they do automate their test cases, they're manually reporting back what their test cases have done. And that's either via spreadsheets or via a Word document and then sending that across. And it's a waste of time. We want them to be spending time with automating test cases so that they can utilize, utilize their time wisely. So that's about all that I got on, on this slide here. Uh, before I move into into my live demo portion, wanted to ask if there's any questions and feel free to go off mute at this moment now so we can ask those questions before we move on. All right, well, it doesn't seem like we you know, it seems like this group is a little bit shy. That's OK. Um, if we don't have any questions or you're too uh, too shy to go off mute, go ahead in the chat and enter your your uh, questions in there or any observations. But we're going to move on to the uh, under the live uh, demo portion of this of this uh, presentation. So I'm just going to pause my share just for a second so that I can uh, clear my screen and get my live demo started. All right, so let's let's go on to this video first and then we'll we'll do some live stuff as well. Um, but I want to show you guys just a, you know one of the one of the use cases that our customers um, came to us with, and and how we were able to help them with creating test cases. So one of our customers came to us about a about two years ago, and they wanted to create um, some. They wanted to create an integration, and they wanted to create an integration between Salesforce and SAP. So whenever they create an opportunity, they wanted it. They wanted some of that data to automatically go over to SAP so that their their agents wouldn't be spending so much time transferring data between two systems. So we went and we created that automation. It was hugely successful. They kept on building their automation team. But then they came to us about a year and a half later and they said, you know, whenever we enter in data from Salesforce into SAP, there's some back end web services that happen between uh, different SAP systems and, and also an AS400 mainframe system. So based on that, what they said is occasionally there's some data loss from Salesforce into this a AS400 system. And what we'd like to do is an end-to-end -end test so that we can test between all these systems that all the data is making its way through and we can detect if there's any data leaks. 
So when, when they said that, we came to them, we said, you know, let's utilize test suite to test from end to end how we do that. So we're going to watch one of these robots run from end to end and and uh, test each one of these applications. Uh, so I'm going to going to start this video now. And we'll, we'll let it run through. I'll stop a few times here and show how it works through each one of these systems. So to start, we want to go into Test Manager. So this is Test Manager. And let me clear my annotations here for you guys real quick. So we're in Test Manager now. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to tell Test Manager to execute our test cases for us. So then it's going to kick off our, our automated test cases. So we click Execute. And then it's going to start running our test cases on our robot. And this is a test robot that is running these test cases. So it's going to log into Salesforce. And as you guys may know already, you know, UiPath has no problem. You know, robots have no problem interacting with Salesforce. Some of these fields can be tricky for other automation tools to, to work with, but UiPath has no problems. It's going to enter in all these fields, all the descriptions. It doesn't have any problems with date fields as well. It's now going to go and make sure that this is set as closed in one, which is our acceptance criteria. So it checks that says okay sounds good we're going to log out now and we're going to move on to this next system so it's going to log in now into this sap system and it's going to navigate to that same record and i'm just going to speed it up so we can get through this quickly and once it's gone into sap it's going to go find that order It's going to enter in all these fields related to it. And while it's doing this, um, you know, what we've utilized for this is the new selectors that we actually built for SAP. So SAP and say Oracle can oftentimes be difficult to, to automate with. But what we've done is we've built specific selectors for those systems so that the automation in those types of systems are very easy to work with. We don't have to have the pains of that. But right now it's just doing its final checks. It's going to log into this AS400 system going to navigate through the various screens and do its final checks to see that the data made it across the different systems. And once it's finished up with that, the results are then going to be returned back to Test Manager so that we can go and view them. We notice that the, the test script is marked as failed. And oftentimes this can be a frustrating thing for a developer or tester to be able to or to to understand what happened with their test case and why it failed. Sometimes all you will get is a stack trace where it just says things failed. We do provide you a stack trace. You can see each one of these verification statements. You know, we got passes on the first three, but then we got the failures. And the fails are what, what is, is what matters most to us. We want to know why these test cases are failing so that we can go address those issues that happened on those test cases. So what we get is we not only do we get a stack trace, but we also get a screenshot. So any one of these verification statements that are run, we'll get a screenshot there that we can view in both test manager we can view in orchestrator. We can also view it in Atlassian Jira or product boards across across the different uh, platforms. We can go and view the screenshots and view the stack trace. So we'd know what happened with our applications and why there was a failure. So this is very useful because then now all I have to do is I go up to the tasks button at the top, I click the button there and I click create defect. And then this will automatically create a defect for my developers to then go and create a fix for that issue. So now we don't have to to play the the game of a telephone tag between the developers and the testers saying, you know, uh, you know, I had an issue here, you know, it, it, it occurred on this screen and then the developer comes back and says, okay, well, can you show me what it looked like when it happened? And then, you know, 
that that whole interaction might take almost a whole day to do it, and that's a lot of lost time for your team. With this, we save time, we save resources, and we're able to a, a lot quicker uh, get through all of these issues and create fixes for your applications. So what we saw there was a RP or a application test. And as I mentioned, we have both application and RPA tests. And the difference between the two is that with an application test, we're testing out an application. So if it is, you know, SAP or ServiceNow, we want to be able to test those systems out. But what if we want to be able to create test cases for our actual RPA workflows? So how about we go and take a look at that? So we're going to go into a into an RPA testing demo. So the idea behind RPA testing is that we can do a variety of different tests. So whether we want to be able to test out our selectors, so say one of your selectors changes and you want to be able to test that, you know, be able to recognize those changes before they make them into production, then we can create those selector tests. We can also test out our business logic. So say we, you know, we have some, you know, we have a process that's going to generate loan quotes then we could test those loan quote uh, automations based on the various logic, be able to use end-to-end -end tests as well as individual component tests and test out the full RPA workflows. So if you guys are already RPA developers, then this will be very useful for you guys. So you can prove to your, to your uh, stakeholders, you know, we actually are testing out all of our processes. So we're going to start out here on our main workflow and we're going to take a look at, you know, some different components within here. Now, if you guys aren't already, it's often useful to right click one of these files and to extract them. So rather than having, you know, nested sequences and flowcharts, we're going to extract this workflow out. And the reason we're going to do this is because then we can test out our individual components at a unit level rather than doing a you know only a full end to end test but we can see here when we extracted it it provides us our arguments which were our uh, our variables but we have our components here that we're going to use and then we're going to create some tests for those components so we can test out those individual components whether it's creating the loans uh, via the portal or via the flat file and then also you know test out the send email functionality now another thing i want to show you guys is if you guys haven't started using the object repository i highly recommend that you use that now um, what this does for us is it allows us to create reusable components for all of our selectors. So say we say we use the login page in, in many different areas in one of our automations. If we utilize the object selectors with the new uh, automation selector technology within UiPath Studio, then we can create object descriptors to be used within our object repository. And then we if we make a change once, then it'll be it'll be replicated across the different applications so for this one we're just going to reuse one of the the objects that we had created previously or we could create one new we're going to just reuse that and then you'll see on the right hand side here that that loan term was automatically at you know was automatically updated to be used for that that object right there okay now, if we go and take a look at our test file or our test folder here, we've got some unit tests, we've got end-to-end -end tests. The end-to-end -end test is what we utilize for our main workflow. If we want to create a test case, let me just go, go back just a little bit just to show you that. Um, what we do here is if we want to create a test for an RPA workflow, then what we do is we right click on the file that we want to create a test for that RPA workflow. So we right click it, then we click create test case. And this then will create a test case for that workflow. So that's a little bit different from the application test. For an application test, you just go up to the new, you click create test case, and then you've got a test case. For a RPA test, we right click 
the file that we want to test, and then we create a test case off of that. So then from here, we would give it a name. And then once we've given it a name and click create, it's going to give us this format of a given when then a GWT. So essentially what that means is say given given I have some data or you know I go and retrieve a you know an asset for my orchestrator or given I log into the system when I go and do this main workflow then I want to assert something so this is where you do your testing activities so say you know I the then function right there is going to say then assert that you know the expected value meets our actual value Okay. So from here, we can go and view our test case that we've created previously. You can see, you know, we're going to assign some test data. So this is in our given block. Then we're going to invoke the main workflow and provide it these folder paths right here. We can also use some of these testing activities that we've created. And these this data activity allows us to generate data for us. Say we want to generate any you know given or last names, then we can have it generate that those fields. We can also have it generate an address. So say you know you want to generate a you know an American and an Australian ac address, then you could generate those for each one of those those areas we do have a handful of different countries that you can utilize for those address for that address functionality um, but we also have things such as you know generate random strings or values um, and you can set parameters for those now we what we did is we were just going to grab some some test data from a file and then we're going to provide it to this main workflow so that it can run our end-to-end -end tests through these different workflows here So there's there's going to be some various logic. It's going to check to see if a row exists. If it does, it's going to create a loan in the UI bank UI portal, and then it's going to send an email out saying that their you know whether their uh, loan has been approved or denied. And right here is where we you know we go and do those some of those tests for the you know the end to end tests. We want to go and check to see that a subject of a verification email was sent out saying you know the loan has been rejected or the loan has been accepted or created. Whatever it is, we just want to check to see that it went through, you know, and and that the, the email was sent out. That email indicates that you know our RPA workflow was successful. So if it doesn't send out an email, then we know we probably had an error in there at some point. So we can see all of our test cases here. Now what we want to do is we want to run one of these test cases. And when we run one of those test cases, it provides us the results in this test explorer tab. And then it also gives us an activity coverage. Now, when we go and click this bottom, this button at the top, this allows us to see which areas in our RPA workflow that it actually covered. So if it's in red, that means that we haven't actually touched that part of the workflow in our RPA test. Now, anything that's green means that we have touched it and that the test case did run through that area. Now, what we want to what we're aiming for is we're really aiming to get to 100 percent. Oftentimes that's not possible. So generally our customers set a, you know, a, a coverage score that's a minimum that their developers need to hit, whether it's 80 percent or 70 percent um, that we do that. What you can do, though, is you can create a mock for your test cases. So you saw on this the send email part wasn't ever hit. Now, maybe we want to be able to create a mock there so that it doesn't actually ever have to, you know, go to that area. So what we can do is surround it with the mock. And what this means is we create something that is read only. And on the left hand side, this is what the, the process will do when you run that process in production. But when we're running our test, we want it to do something else. So for instance, say you 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 know it it might need to send out an email or update a record in production but in test you don't want it to actually go and do that you want it to maybe just say you know log a message that says you know mocking of creating record just log this out so kind of skip it over so that's what those mock what that mocking does we've created this mocking check if file exists and we essentially just 
you know, don't want it to check that the file exists. We just want to say, you know, it exists. We know it exists. So we're just going to set it as true there. So this is very useful for, for a lot of our testers because they don't want to, uh, you know, they don't want to hit every part in their workflow. They want to skip over some of those areas. So I'm going to jump ahead just a little bit so we can get to one of our tests. So here's our verify that we're going to send the email out. So these verify statements are the important part uh, of, of a test case. Any test case needs to have a verify statement to tell us whether something passes or fails. So for this one, we're just going to go and grab and grab some emails, and then we're going to check to see that the expected value of the, of the email meets our actual value of that email. And there's a variety of different of uh, verification statements that we can use for one of those. Um, but we're just going to just going to utilize this, you know, this equivalent operator there. And then once we've run that, so I'm just going to jump all the way ahead or back over to to test manager. So once we have, you know what, actually, I need to jump back a little bit. Um, So we had talked about the linking step. So let me pull up that slide again, just to remind you guys. So we talked about how, you know, you create a requirement in Jira, it's consumed by test manager, and then we need to do a linking back to that so that anytime we run that test case via one of those robots, that the results will get back to Jira. So this is where we do that. We go and click this test manager button and we tell it that we want to link the test case back to test manager. So we click link, we can link or unlink. Um, but once we've created that link and we run that test case, then we can view that the test case has actually been automated because sometimes we still want to manually, uh, manually run those tests. But we'll just go and take a look in test manager at some of our test case or test sets that we've created. So oftentimes we have customers that create a variety of different uh, test sets. And the reason these are useful is say for instance, your, your, your company needs to be able to, to run some smoke tests. Maybe you just wanna run some tests every hour just to make sure that the system is up and running because you recognize that you know, this system that you have, sometimes it goes down. And if it goes down, then you need to go and do something. Maybe you need to go and notify the stakeholders that this system is down, or you need to, you need to have, you know, a server restarted. You can have these smoke tests do that and then handle those issues. Then maybe you have regression tests and these regression tests need to, you know, really test very in-depth processes. And you're going to run these every, you know, every week, and every time that you're going to post some code. So maybe these take a couple hours to finish. So we'll have a, you know, a very extensive list of test cases and it's going to be very thorough. So that's why we create these test sets so we can reuse test cases across different testing scenarios. And then we can, we can run them in different areas. So if we take a look at one of our test cases here, or one of our test sets here, we can assign any test case that we have created within our projects. And then these ones then can be executed by in an automated fashion. So let's go and take a look at one that we ran previously. We can see that you know all of the test cases passed. We can see how long it took. We can see when it ran. Um, all of those, all those fields are, are, are shown here. And then we can also view all the logs of everything that happened, where it was run, really gives you a good audit of everything that happened there. Now, how about we go and take a look at the at one of the results of where it failed? Um, so we'll go and take a look. We can see that it failed. You know, there's no assertions there. Um, so we're going to go and take a look here. So it says take screenshot loan could not find the UI element. What this tells us is make sure that the UI element is visible. So if we recognize that, then we realize that this selector didn't work for us. We need to go and update this selector. We're just going to connect it to the object repository because we had forgotten to add this one to the object repository. And then once we do that, 
It's going to be updated across all of our test cases. We'll go and run it again, and then we'll get a pass on that test case. All right, so I've got one last demo. Um, and we're going to just take a look at the CICD functionality within, uh, within the test suite. So the first thing I want to show you guys is that we're going to go into JIRA. So instead of using Test Manager, I'm using JIRA to be able to, to test out um, our, or to be able to, to, to write my requirements and write my test cases out. So when we go and look at one of these test cases, this test case is attached to a requirement. So I have a login requirement and then a login OK test case. So there's many different test cases that I've attached to one requirement. And I've created this test case within Studio. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and commit this code into GitHub. So you can see that I'm just making a commit, me commit message and then I'm going to click commit and push. And it's going to go into my, my GitHub repository. So we saw, I'm going to slow this one down a little bit. So we noticed that it was updated 12 seconds ago in GitHub. So here's my GitHub repository. I checked my code in, has all my code in there with the XAMLs and, and my CSVs. And now if we go to Azure DevOps, we can see that one of our pipelines has kicked off. Our job has been started. Now while that job is starting, let's take a look at how I built one of these. So it's actually pretty simple. Um, I am not an Azure DevOps DevOps uh, complete expert. You know, I, I know enough to be dangerous with it. And when I when I created this demo video, I was I was pretty much a novice. So that, that's how easy this is to set up an Azure DevOps pipeline, or at least a simple one. Really, all you have to do is search for the task, search for UI path, and you'll be given some different activities. And now since the creation of this video, we've added probably about four or five more activities that you can utilize to, you know, get assets and, and stuff like that. But the simplest type of activities that we can use are the pack, test, and deploy. Now, we, when we go and drag these activities in, it's going to give us some parameters that we just need to fill out, you know, whether it's the versioning, where your project is. And once you've filled that out, the job is going to be queued up and then it'll start execute, executing each one of those steps. So we saw that when we ran this test case, that our tests failed. So the packing up, it was successful, then the test failed, so it didn't deploy my code, which is what we want. We, we only want it to deploy code if we get 100% pass rate. So we'll go and log into JIRA, and we'll go and find that test case, then we can go and view the results. So we view the results and we notice that there was a failure there. So we know, you know there's something wrong. How about we go and log into, into Orchestrator as well. We'll go dig a little bit deeper and just go see you know, our, our verification failed. We can see the full stack trace here. Um, and then we, you know, we recognize where the issue was. So we need to go make some changes. So instead of true or instead of false, we're gonna set this to true. And then we're gonna recheck in our code into get. So we're going to change test case to true, commit and push. We'll go back to Azure DevOps. We'll go and check on this job. It's going to start running for us. It's going to pack it up. It's going to run our tests. We can see each one of these tests. It'll show, you know, starting test, you know, starting initial test, and then it's going to run each one of those tests one by one. And then we notice that the test passed. So because it passed, it's going to deploy the code onto our orchestrator. And then, yeah, you know, now that it's finished, we can go and view the results. We'll go and we can also go into Jira. You now see that we had, you know, the failure before. So we have a, you know, an audit where, you know, we tested it before it failed and then we made an update to our code and now we have a pass. So this gives us an audit trail to say, you know, we did actually test our code. You know, everything has been fully tested and we can be assured that, you know, this is this is tested code rather than just relying on your developers to say, you know, yes, we, you know, we did test things out. 
right so i'm running low on time we've got uh 152 eastern time right now and it looks like we do have some some questions coming in so the first question do we does test suite have load testing capabilities so at the moment we do not we do not specialize in load testing we have had customers that had some specific use cases where it did fit in, say where you have to have, you know, say 100 active users on an application at one time, and they have to be real users. You can't just, you know, connect some some APIs and you use load tester, JMeter or something like that. You have to have, you know, actual users. So they would use, you know, 100 robots and have them all connect at once. Now that with that being said, we do recognize that it's not our strength um, and we are looking into partnerships currently with load testing uh, uh, companies to be able to to be able to get load testing integrated into uh, the UiPath test suite and test manager. Um, the main reason that we don't you know, fully advocate for load testing in our platform right now is because the dashboarding isn't quite there yet. And we do want to be providing you loads of value in our in the dashboarding area so that, you know, it's it's, you know, a full functional tool. Um, so I, I'm always honest with my customers. I don't want to, you know, tell you you should be using this for for a use case it's not useful for. Um, so um, if we do have updates, um, then you know we will be putting them on the Insider program and also on our public releases if we do uh, release anything on that. Okay. And Kate, if there's anything else that you have questions about that, feel free to to. Uh, put it in the chat. Hopefully that answered your question. We have uh, Ken asked, how does the test results integration to uh, Jira test cycle? Um, so let's see. Let me see if I can answer that correctly. So how it works is the within Jira, we have a connector built into the tool. So here is my Jira dashboard. And if I go into my project, let me see if I can get this, uh, get this to pull up. Sometimes my, uh, my project is a little bit slow. Um, but if I go to settings here, we've got a connection that's built into, into the system. Um, I'm not sure that I'll be able to get in there right now. Um, but essentially, we create a connection between Jira and we use the X-Ray plugin. X-Ray plugin is what allows us to, to grab the results from Orchestrator or from, uh, from Test Manager. So Test Manager is connected to Jira. As we kind of talked about on this slide right here, we have you know Jira is connected uh, connected to test manager and test manager is connected to orchestrator so when the robot runs it returns the results to orchestrator and the results are returned to test manager and uh, since test manager has that connection to jira then the results that you know when we were in studio we go up to the top we click test manager and then say we want to you know create a link so say for this one, we want to create a link to test manager. Uh, right now I'm having some connection issues there, but we create the linkage to test manager saying, hey, this test case corresponds to this test manager uh, test case. Then the results then, because we've made the connection across the board, the results are fed back to Jira. Ken, does that, does that help you out? Yes. Okay, great. And then Krishna asks, is the UiPath Test Suite Test Manager compatible with the latest version of ServiceNow? You know, I, I would have to check on that for you. Um, I believe that we are. Um, we do have a strong partnership with ServiceNow. Um, and, you know, whether it is uh, whether it's the whether it's your service now project management tool or whether it's your service desk tool we do have connections in there if you want to follow up with me krishna and with the team then we can get back to you regarding uh service now 
Patrick asks, are there pre-built automation RPA workflows between UiPath and Oracle ERP embedded business uh, process log logic, or do you have to develop from scratch for typically very repetitive user tasks in enterprise solutions? So I'm going to kind of leave that one uh, to the eAlliance folks. They work a yeah. lot with, uh, with Oracle. Um, I believe that they do kind of have some jumpstart some jumpstart okay. workflows um and you can yeah, utilize yes, i can i can elaborate on that so Great. Uh, patrick right asked the question so patrick yes for commonly used business processes creating an order invoice cash receipt posting elance has been building a library of reusable automation test cases we just you just provide uh you know your own test data and then that's Pretty much those are compatible from 11.5.10 or EBS all the way to 12.2.20. So yes, there are, you don't have to reinvent from scratch. You could start with the jump start from a pre-built uh, library of test cases. If you could give us your LinkedIn, I'm sure, I'm not sure if you post it, then we can definitely be in touch with you uh, regarding that. Any more questions here, uh, Mick? Looks Hello. like that's all the questions that everybody has posted. Oh, looks like we had a couple more. Uh, it was just a, a repost. That's okay. okay. Yeah, I think that was the last one. Okay, great. So thank you everybody for joining today. Um, if you have any other questions, you can reach out to me or uh, I think Ramesh put his email on here too. We can answers for you. Um, and I just want to really thank Mick and Ramesh for presenting today. We really appreciate it. So thank you, Diana. Thank, thank you, everyone. Have a great day. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.